Hey everybody, what's going on? Just back here with another video. I just wanted to kind of break down what Pierre Polyev said yesterday in an interview that he did uh, when he was doing his, you know, his uh, tour in Quebec. And he basically touched on a subject that he hasn't really been uh, too talkative about. And a lot of people were interested in hearing what his plans for immigration would be. And as it turns out, he agrees with most Canadians. Not that immigration in general is a bad thing, but that we do need to control it. Right, we, it definitely needs to be much better managed, because we are we're bringing in on schedule to bring in 1.2 million people into the country per year while only building 200,000 houses. Right, so this is why you need to manage it, and it's not like you know, because a lot of people who are against this whole you know control immigration, they think that we're anti-immigration, and you know I'm here to tell you that's not true. Maybe some people are. But let's be honest, we are all immigrants. We, we know that. We're very aware of this. But this isn't like an anti-immigration problem for most people. It's a math problem. If you're bringing in 1.2 million people and only building 200,000 houses, where's a million people a year going to go? We already have people here who are homeless and don't have enough money to eat and they're eating at food banks. It's just... It's not an anti-immigration issue. It's not a racism issue. It is a math issue. And I've said it many times before on this channel. I'll say it again. The liberals are not very good at math. Or anything, for that matter, based off of the, this current administration. So, you know, he needs to reduce immigration. He said that the conservative government immigration will be, under the conservative government, immigration will be much lower, especially for temporary uh, immigration. Right, so people coming over here for school and then they're leaving and going back home. And I've met multiple people who have done that, <clears throat> right? Like it's, you know, it's it's something that, you know, it's like a nice idea, but they're coming here to get education and then they're leaving. Now, I don't know why they're coming to Canadian universities and colleges to get education, but apparently it's still valuable somehow. And they're doing that. And when I say people, or when I talk to some of these people and they say, you know, um, yeah, I'm just here from this country or that country and I'm going to be here for a couple of years, but I'm going back home. And then I say, you know, how come you, know, like, what, how come you don't want to stay here? Like why, like, why do you want to come here temporarily? And they said, well, because of education, but I don't want to live here culturally. I want to go back to whatever, you know, whatever country they're coming from, whether it be, you know, a country in Africa or in Asia or in Europe. They're coming here and they're leaving, right? If you want to come here and like build a life and start a family and, you know, work and, you know, try to go after that Canadian dream that has now been destroyed by Justin Trudeau, then yeah, that's, that's fine too. And we should definitely help them, but we still have to control and manage how many people are coming in, right? So just want to be very clear on this like I have no problem with immigration I enjoy the fact that there's people from other cultures and countries and different parts of the world who come here you can learn a lot of things about you know their culture their food especially I'm a foodie I like trying all kinds of different types of food so you know it's <laughs> that part of it is actually my favorite part about immigration for a selfish reason but I also like the fact that people can come over here and go from a country that's maybe war torn or it's just in an impoverished country you can come here and if you're an honest, hardworking person, you can get a good life. And you should be able to do that. And the more that we thrive as, as a country, you can have more and more people come in. But at this current rate, especially when we have so many taxes and there's so many people who can't afford food and there's, there's not enough good paying jobs with benefits and unions and whatnot. So you're coming here, you're making 16, 17 bucks an hour. And then it's like, okay, like I'm going back home because... This sucks. I'm going to be homeless here. And it's cold, right? Like, if you're from Nigeria and you're you're working at a Tim Hortons, and it's like, how much is it for a one-bedroom apartment? Oh, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 or more, and you're making eighteen, nineteen hundred a month, it's like, okay, so I can pay my rent so that I can have a place to starve. Or I have to rely on food banks. Like, that's not exactly chasing the Canadian dream. You shouldn't have to work 60, 70, 80 hours just to afford a basic life. Working 60, 70, 80 hours is to you so that you can get ahead and save and buy a house and then pay it off. Uh, generally speaking, if you're working like a, like a really physical job, it's going to be really hard to work that many hours anyway. But if you have like a business, right, or if you start a podcast or YouTube channel 
and it eventually you know takes off and you start doing really well you know you know then you can make a good living for yourself work a lot of hours but it's something that you like it's your own business you're passionate about it so you it doesn't feel like you're working that much right but if you're you know digging ditches working construction 80 hours is an, is an insane amount of work and you should not have to work anywhere close to that to just to have a basic apartment and a basic car a basic life but under this administration i mean you're working you're you're, sp you're spending 60 70 percent of your money on rent how are you going to eat? How are you going to save? How are you going to buy a car? Even just a used car, even leasing a car. If you're young, insurance is ridiculously expensive. When I was 17, 18 years old, when I bought my car, so I think I was 18, 19 when I bought my first car, and it, insurance was 300 bucks. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Car payment was another 300 bucks. Gas, a couple hundred bucks. How could you possibly afford that? And by the way, when I was 19, making 19 bucks an hour, rent in Burlington, Ontario, was you could find places for 700 bucks. So if you're making two grand and you have a car, and even though the, the insurance payments are, are really high and you know, you're know you leasing the car and you're paying gas, if rent's $700, you can afford that off, two, off of two grand or so. And that's what I was doing. And that's when I, that, this was you know, about 15 years ago. And I thought, hey, you can just go to work and live an average life and it's going to be fine. You know, you can just be a, you know, come home and on the weekends play poker with your pals and, you know, watch some sports and have a few beers and enjoy yourself. But And, well, also being a, like an honest, hardworking person, working your 40 hours a week. It's what you're supposed to do to have a basic life. That's not the case anymore. The, the Canadian dream is dying and it needs to be restored. And it sure as hell ain't going to be restored by Justin Trudeau. I want to make this very clear, not anti-immigration. I'm just pro-math. Once we start paying off our national debt and we start cleaning up the streets and we start ending, stop, we stop the poverty rate that's continue, continuing, we stop the rise of the poverty rate that's continuing to go up and up and up, and we start to thrive as a country, build more houses, we can have more immig uh, immigration. That would be great if we could just have everyone from the world come in and we just keep expanding and our wealth keeps expanding and our prosperity keeps expanding and poverty is going down. We can let more people in and help as many people as you can, if you can afford it. Canada can't afford it. You, you, you can't afford anything when you're $5 trillion in debt. You're broke. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I really, really appreciate it. Also, just wanted to let you know and remind you that if you don't mind, I really uh, would appreciate you smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. It really, really helps the channel grow and you know further monetization. I really, really appreciate every single one of you who watch, like, subscribe, and comment, whether it's a positive or a negative comment. I always enjoy reading them. I enjoy hearing different people's perspectives. Uh, so thanks again so much, guys, for watching. I'll be back shortly with another video. Take care.